Howdy, 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 my name is Anacha Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read Homestuck. So in the last episode, uh, the trickster thing ended. Really wish I had known it was going to end before I gave up the ghostly episode before that. It would have just been a whole episode of nothing but trickster, and it would have been awesome. So now we're doing, what's it called? Act 6, Act 5, Act 1, Times 2 Combo. And in the last episode, like I said, they were on their quest beds talking to each other through each other. And I also realized that this arrow right here is actually meant to bounce me back up to this side. So instead of having them both be open, I'll just focus on the one and not go insane. So, uh, Roxy, while you're at it, do you think you could relay the same sentiments to Dirk? I was thinking about all the stuff he said to me while we were all telling him the dance, and yeah, I was really being a prick when I ran away to Lomax. He was right about everything. I should have come clean about wanting some space. Damn it, Jake! After your whole bravery spiel, you want to relay double apologies through me? I know! I'm so terribly... I'm, I'm sorry! I'm just not filling up to those conversations yet. My head is killing me! Ugh, Grandma, why did your sweet skull-based computing technology have to be a, such a brain fucker? Well, I can't do it. Why? Because I'm sort of... Kinda... Not talking to Dirk either. Why not? Because... Reasons? Golly, but... You are talking to Jane, yes? Why? Well... Seeing as she's prob presumably talking to Dirk, and you're relaying my apology to her already, why don't you relay my apology to Dirk through her? Oh my fucking god, Jake. Jake, no! Laugh my ass off. Why not? She'd probably be a sport about it. Hell, they could even probably bond over what an absolute douche muffin I've been to them both. El Sai. Look, Jake, you squeezed a Spanish sigh out of me. Are you happy? And if there's some heavy business you're having trouble addressing with Dirk in person, you could get Jane to relay... Him a message for you as well. <laughs> Jake, Jake, no, Jake, that's, all right. I'm gonna tell Jane, like, pretty much exactly what you said, but only because it's so fucking dumb and hilarious. And let's see if I'm right about this. Yeah! I just thought there was just something wrong with the arrows. Jane, Jake wants you to pass an apology to Dirk for him, too. What? Is true. This is just getting silly. He wants you, he wants you both to bond over his douche muffininess. P.S. Douche muffin was his word, not mine. I'm I'm being hellies impartial about all this. We were already sort of doing that. Oh yeah? Wait, don't don't tell him that. That would be mean spirited. <laughs> Hold up, what are you and Dirk saying? Oh nothing. Anything about me? No, just some stuff we would have talked about should have talked about a long time ago. Gotcha. Oh, also, he wants me to tell you to give a message to Dirk from me, too, while you're at it. The Crocker switchboard is lighting up today. Why does Jake want you to give Dirk a message through me? Um, because he's ridiculous? Do you actually want to say something to Dirk, but can't at the moment? Oh, uh, not really. Hmm? Well, I don't know. Wait, is Dirk not talking to you for some reason? Is that why Jake suggested going through me? Good gravy, this is getting complicated. No, well, I mean... Maybe he does got a bone to pick with me and don't want to talk, but I'm not sure. Mainly said I can't bring myself to talk to him. Why not? <clears throat> oh, hey, it's Jack. I guess we're just going to be watching what he's doing while this conversation's happening. Because I'm a shitty disgrace, and he's probably just so ashamed of me, he can barely stand being inside the same moon with me at this point. Why would you think that? Because you heard what he said about how I fell off the wagon, you could just tell how disappointed he was, and he was right to be. But you weren't in your right state of mind, though. I know, but you said it yourself, about the confessions you made to Jake. Sure, you were tripping balls on a chair pop, but that really just enabled you to do what you really wanted to do deep down, so what I do the moment Jake snuck up and owned me with that magic pumpkin, I was like, yo, let's get smashed at my place. Oh, jeez. I hardly wasted a second before giving in, and here I thought I was actually over that. But the second I'm giving the slightest justification to drink again, I say, fuck it. So it turns out I didn't want to, I didn't stop wanting to like I, wanting to like I told myself, but that I still want, wanted to while pretending I didn't per some bogus tough girl act. Like I thought I was better than the problem, or more like I thought I was too cool and too strong to admit it was actually really hard. But the truth is, I was not strong or cool. I was lame plus- I was weak plus lame all along. And now Dirk knows that too, and for some reason letting him down feels like the worst part? Which is equally lame and weak, cause I could- I should care for my own sake, not for how it makes me- makes a dude see me, but it still just really bothers me. 
Man, Jake again. Hold, hold, please. You're motherfucking welcome. Oh, it's doing this now. Roxy? Rox, what is she saying? Talk to me, Roxy. Please don't leave me hanging here. I can't take it. I can't bear having two of my closest chums hate me and then having you shut, shut me out on top of that. Okay, okay, she, Jake, calm, calm your micro shorts. I'm here. Ah, there you are. I'm sorry for being a pest, but I just see Jane there pecking away at conversations with you and Dirk, and it feels like you're all kind of leaving me behind. No, Jake, nobody's doing that. Okay, yeah, I'm probably just being paranoid, but I've done such a bang-up job of alienating my other friends, so you're the only one I can talk to for now. Wait, I haven't alienated, alienated you yet, have I? Nah, don't worry, we're still, uh, humanated. Are you really sure, Roxy? Are you sure you're not just trying to spare my feelings? You can be honest with me! If you hate me now, too, please just say so. Sweet Guy Fury's fat laughing ghost, Jake. No, I don't hate you. I promise you're still my bro, goddammit. Okay, phew. Then talk to me. Um, about what? I don't know anything. What are you talking about with Jane? My drinking problems. I see. Would you like to talk about them with me? Maybe I could help. Damn, Jake, like... That is cool and appreciate it in theory, but this is kind of some heavy shit for me. I really don't know if I can do double duty on my alcoholism with you and Jane simultaneously. Oh yeah, that's probably not the best way to go. Yes, probably not. The eyes. The eyes. So then, what else is there we can chew the old fat about? Really bond over together in an emotionally fulfilling manner? Dad, you're an extra silly guy. Well, then OJ, why don't you tell me what you're thinking and we go from there? Alright, so, that sure was a doozy of a kiss you gave Dirk there, huh? <laughs> LOL, fuck! Yeah, how was it? It was, um, go on, it was fucking inappropriate, and, and yet, and yet, Oh my god, it was so choice, but wrong! Wrong, 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 wrong! I don't know, it seemed innocent enough to me. What was so wrong about it? A whole host of things, not sure in how much detail I want to spell out why exactly it wasn't cool, but like, Jake, you're a pretty simple guy, and I mean that as, as heart ways as possible. It just wasn't right. No disagreements there. But like I said, I'm here to talk about whatever you feel like. Okay, see, this is just another embarrassing thing from my past, when I was more out of control. With Dirk, I was just way too aggressive. I hassled him all the time, pretty much every day, just like he said about me and him, like, getting married and having babies! You know, last male, female, and I was always a hunk his dreams come true, time for repopulate. As the eyes continue to freak out. See, I'm not sure if he's doing this to him, or if that's just a thing that's happening. Yeah, so, not cool looking back on it, and I had no excuse, I always knew he was just such a gay dude, and I guess maybe hitting on a guy who doesn't like girls once or twice maybe is alright, or even flattering, but after so long it was probably just pissing him off or messing with his head or something, it definitely wasn't what he wanted to hear from a friend, let alone day in day out through garbled drunk texts, so when I fucking harassed him into kissing me, it just brought back some low rent shit I thought we put behind us, just another way I completely humiliated myself in front of him. So, is that why you can't talk to him now? Mm-hmm. I certainly have no trouble relating to that. Yep, I don't even know why, really. He's, like, taciturn to the max about everything, but there's something about him that just makes it hurt to feel like you let him down. You really love him, don't you? Sigh. Yeah, Jake, I guess. The answer is a categorical, unapologetic fucking yeah, but... I don't think that was much of a sec much a secret, and the fact that it was so loudly not a secret exemplified my stupidity on the matter. It's fair to say I never came close to feeling as strongly about him as you. I envy you, actually. I've actually worried at times that I just wasn't capable of feeling that way about anyone, and maybe that's why I was meant to be alone. Eh, you ain't missing much. Love is a brutal shit ninja with turds for nunchucks. Be grateful that stank-ass motherfucker's flipping out nowhere near you. Meanwhile, up here... I STAB TWO TIMES COMBO! I noticed you nearly slipped that wedding ring on his finger. Oh god, that ring! 
You almost, you almost scooped my boyfriend out from under me one fell proposal. Oh, did I? From under you, eh? Wait, no, I mean, walks for eternity. Whoa, now, wait a minute. Easy too, just messing. Oh, <laughs> okay. Man, that ring, though, what happened to it? Do you remember? Not really. God damn it. Must have lost it when I was a fucking trickster. <laughs> Shakes fist at all tricksters. Dun dun. Dun 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 dun. Did you need it for something? Need it? Not really. I just really like that ring. Kind of spoke to me in a way. <laughs> Want to know something lame? Yes? The moment I first saw that ring, it, I was like in my head thinking, someday I want to give that ring to the person I marry, whoever that is. Dow. That's not lame, that's nice. Nah, that's pretty lame, but whatever. Shows what sort of one-track mind I got. God, I am obsessed with finding somebody to kiss, aren't I? It is really quite pathetic. Although the funny thing is, the ring turns you invisible, which might be my subconscious telling me something about my love life. Like, I find a guy in my dreams, slip it on my finger, and poof, he disappears. Bye-bye, hubby. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. The ring is gone. And with it, so too are my lame, lame dreams. That sure is an explosion going on up there on Prospect Moon. Or Prospect Prospect. Is everything okay? Yeah, he just wanted to make sure I don't hate him like y'all do, which you don't even. I see. So I'm just talking to him a bit to help him not feel bad. Sorry. That's okay. You were saying? I was gonna say why I finally quit drinking. I mean, if you want to know. Yes. Actually, once you did stop, it made me finally realize it was a problem for you for a long time. And I didn't say anything at the time, but it made me wonder if I wasn't doing the right thing before. By failing to point out you might have a problem? Or just going along with it and participating in lively banter anytime you clearly had too much to drink? Was I being a bad friend? Nah, it wasn't your responsibility to fix my shit. And anyway, I think I made it hard for anyone to come at me like it was a real problem. I was always joking around so much and having a good time, like, kind of overzealously so. That I probably just made people feel like a shitty wet blanket for even mentioning it. And to the other one. How long do you think it's been a problem? I don't know. It's, it's hard to say exactly when I started getting really carried away. There's just some point I discovered a load of my mom's centuries-old booze in the house, and I didn't have much to relate to her except by except her books, so I felt like drinking was a way to be more like her, or maybe be closer to her, kinda. And there was nobody around except the silly chess people who went away to make me feel more alone, because they reminded me I was the only one, of, like only one of two humans left, and the other was an ocean away. So little by little, I got out of hand. And some of the only things I had to look forward to was the idea that the game was supposed to be able to bring my mom back, assuming I even decided to help the batter witch out by playing at all. Okay, then. That's a laser. It's a fire in the laser! Bah! Okay. But it turned out you couldn't bring her back, at least not the way you thought, so what was it that made you finally decide to give it up? Well, that's pretty much what it was. When I first went to Lopan and I, I saw my sprite there, so I got out my bottle of, of Mom's Lime and was all ready for the bestest, most poignant reunion ever, and that's when the Juggalo struck. And I just knew the witch had fucked me over again. Cause what other hag is insane enough to get Juggalos to do her dirty biz nigh exclusively? No hags but her! And I was so pissed and so distraught about that goddamn clown squandering my sprite, so I got crazy drunk and felt the, felt the super sorriest for myself I ever did. But little did I know, there would be a lovely silver lining to the debacle. Dear sweet precious Favetta! She became a great friend, and what's more, she told me not to worry, that my mom would be coming anyway and all I had to do was wait a while. And I believed her because she knew stuff plus was the best. So that's when I decided to clean up my act. I didn't want her to make a sloppy, embarrassing mess of a daughter. Even if she did like to drink at some point, it was kind of a childish idea that doing so myself would make me closer to her or help us bond or whatever. Anyway, I think I might be, uh, might have overestimated her drinking habits. She sure didn't look like no drunk. Oh, Jay, did I mention I saw her in a dream today? No! She's real young, though, like our age, and she looks so pretty and happy, not like a girl with a booze challenges. I think her favorite color must be orange, just like Dirk. She was wearing the same sunny orange nighty, nighty deal I caught a, a glimpse of in her, her very briefly another time. And no, she also called me mom. Huh? Huh, that's right. You know, I'm, I'm really not sure if she's actually my mom, but I do know we're totes genetically related somehow. I just think there's more to it than we know. 
I guess we'll find out! Whoa. Oh, I guess the explosion is going to cause their, their god tierness. And here we have this. Did he just blow up the whole planet? There's a parking citation. Why does he no longer have a leg? I think I might have missed why he no longer has a leg. The whole place was shaking for a moment there. What? Roxy, do you know if Jane just felt that rumbling too? Yeah. Is it still going on? N no, it stopped. What do you think it was? I don't know, maybe an earthquake? I'm not sure if these moons can have earthquakes. Doesn't matter. Some sort of prospect in lunar anomaly, I guess. Probably nothing to worry about. Maybe it was like tidal forces due to gravitation? Or the tensile forces from that big ass chain? Um, yes, let's say it, that's what it was. Is anything going to happen to this this planet? Have you and Roxy been talking? Yes. Is she pissed at me or something? She won't talk to me. No, not at all. Then what gives? She was wondering the same about you. What? Are you disappointed in her? Why would I be? It seemed that way to her earlier when you chastised her for drinking again. Oh, hey, it's the Batter Witch. The Batter Ship. Well, yeah, I was upset she fell off the horse, or the wagon, the horse wagon, whatever. The thing you ride around on when you ain't drinking, drinking, but so what? There was cotton candy in her hair and she was being stupid. What do you expect? It was a moment of indiscretion. I'm not mad at her and I don't, I'm not disappointed in her. That's ridiculous. You want to know what I really think of Roxy? I'm proud of her. She's the only one of us who could face her problems and then get down to business and actually solve them. No endless hand-wringing or suffering in silence or any of that bullshit. She saw she had an addition, and then she decided to fucking fix it. Just like that. She's probably stronger than the other three of us put together. Okay, so that's badass, even if she's a terrible person. Remember way back before this started, we were talking, you and me, and I was rambling at length about leadership, like I actually had a clue what I was talking about. I remember. You said I would be the leader of our team, in name and in spirit, although I never really felt like it. Yeah, that's kind of the point. I guess in a way I was right, but not how I expected. See, to be perfectly honest, we are a party of losers. Heroes make shit happen, but that's not what we do, or what we're even supposed to do. We wait. We wait for literally everything. We wait for other people to reach our... F Reach out first so we can fix our relationships. We wait for these legendary heroes to arrive and bring competence and promise to a feudal situation. Even now, look at us. What are we waiting for? To kill ourselves? For someone who to come along and do it for us? It doesn't even matter. As the four nobles of the Void Session, we do what we were created to do. We sit around on our asses, waiting. <laughs> she messing with Aridin? Or, uh... Whatever that sprite was called. We were all designated for a session that was utterly inert. A place where the mechanisms for success never even existed to begin with. In such a place, it makes sense that the formal leader would be neutralized to make feel unempowered and static. And it seems particularly fitting she would be the noble of life in a realm of the dead. A realm that foretold of a life player who felt lifeless. A hope player who felt hopeless. And a heart player who was just a stone cold motherfucker. When we talked about leadership, and I was all on my high horse telling you how shit would go down, I also said I would be the one pulling the strings. Remember? That I'd be the functional leader of our party. And there might have been something to that in a different session. But what good is a man of action in a place where action itself is intrinsically fruitless? So it's occurred to me that by some tragic flaw in its design, our session was meant to be leaderless. And I'd feel safe concluding that, except for a feeling that's been gnawing at me. It's the feeling that it would make perfect sense if a session like this had a dark horse leader. A leader who was invisible to us all along. Fittingly, a void player to lead a void session. She would be a leader not in name, or in spirit, or in function, whatever that means, but more of an emotional leader. Who would selflessly try to hold everyone together while the rest of us did our best to fall apart. And Roxy has been that for us every step of the way. Going unnoticed and un 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 unappreciated. Think of how much shit she's had to put up with from all of us. She never complains, never turns it around and makes it about her problems. She just works her ass off, making sure we all stay friends. 
If that isn't a leader, I don't know what is. Okay, so she's definitely bl about to blow up something. <laughs> and she has fantastic hair, even if she is awful. So, that's how crazy it is for her to think I'm disappointed in her. The truth is, she's the most amazing person I ever knew. She's everything in a human being I wish I could be, but can't because I'm, I'm in my own way. Honestly, I'm not even sure if I'm worthy of dying next to her. I think she probably felt bad for hitting on me all those years, like I was getting fed up with her or something, but all it really did was make me feel guilty that I couldn't give her what she wanted. Like, settle down and have a couple of weirdo goddamn kids with her someday. I guess there were times I thought about it, being all alone on Earth with her and stuff. I couldn't, though. I have to stay true to myself. Still, she would deserve it. Nobody deserves to get all the things they always wanted more than she does. And it suddenly seems kind of stupid that I think these things about her, but she doesn't even know it. I guess I should tell her all this sometime. There is some crazy shit going down up here. Is he about to shoot a laser from his mouth? I think that would be nice. Of course, she is right there, you know. I know. I'm a, I'm a little reluctant to drop all that on her. Looking at what I just said, it's kind of overwhelming. I feel like, in a way, you can destroy someone with effusive praise. Or maybe I'm just projecting how I would feel about that kind of intense positivity coming at me. I don't know. But I still think confessions like that can change stuff between people. Like the way they act around each other. Maybe it's worth it. Maybe. Or maybe it's better to just say not so much of it, like all at once. Maybe it'd be better for now if you could pass a short message to her for me, if only to help kill this awkward silence between us. Like what? Could you just tell her I love her? No, wait! I mean, not in that way, though. More like, Dirk, I know what you mean. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, they're both shooting lasers. Oh, right, right, right. I forgot that uh, Solas had the lasers, and that's probably why she had to use his powers to shoot the lasers. <laughs> Not sure why he's shooting mouth lasers, though. No, wait, don't. That would be a weird mixed signal. I mean, it's true, but please say something else instead. Uh, Dirk, something's happening. Tell her that I'm proud of her. And as a person, she's n everything I wish I could be. I wish I could be as nice as and, and loving and selfless as her, but can't because I'm too busy being me. Dirk! Are these, are these moons near each other, or are they just... I saw some green in there for a second. The Tremors are back, big time. That's weird, I can feel it this time too. Kaboom, go the moon. Kaboom, go the moon. Oh, jeez. Okay, so I guess they're all dead. And they're god-tearing! Dun-dun. Spectacular rainbow weird drippy god-tears! Heart. Uh, life. Hope. With tiny pants. Void. Roxy's so great. <laughs> oh. Well, this sure is a thing that's happening. I feel like the act is going to end soon, so I feel like I should probably just wait for that. Okay, so he's bloody, angry, and crazy. They're freaking the hell out. Is this planet going to do something now, or is this, this just weird Stonehenge? Oh. Wait. He's coming! He's coming! They're here! 
<laughs> well, he's not in the universe anymore. Jay, that might have been a bit much. I'm just saying that might have been a bit much. Oh, she's talking. Hi! As they're just shocked. Are you Jake? Uh, yeah. Hi, Jake! I'm Jade! It's nice to finally meet you! Wow, uh, yeah. And you must be Jane? Me? Mm-hmm. Oh, I... Yes. It's nice to meet you too, Jane. Yes. So, uh, Jake! If you wanna... If it doesn't wanna load, click the arrows. Where are your pants? Uh... Her Imperious Condescension, Spring Trap Times 2 Combo. Oh, I said it right. I meant to say condensation. I said it right, though. The main reason I say con condensation is because I always feel like I'm saying condescension wrong. So I just go with condensation. Okay, so she's doing something with her arm. Oh, right, that. Brainwashed Anger Jade. Right, Grimbark. Did they actually call her that, or was that a thing the fandom made up and they just went with it? Grimbork! Did she grow fangs, or is she just screaming? I didn't catch whether or not she had fangs. Oh, yep, nope, she has fangs. Bark! Man, her eyes are all messed up and everything. Don't, don't do the, don't do the thing. Oh. Oh. I forgot about this. Are you gonna load? Don't do me like this laptop. Come on. We're almost there. And then Jane was God tier brainwashed. Obey. Sir, uh, I'm not sure what that says. Sir something. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what that's saying. Consume? Zap. Obey. Is it loading? Damn. Okay, so they both just got punched by gods. Dirk is getting sent somewhere. So I guess he's get, probably going to get sent outside of the universe as well. Yep. Load! Okay, so we got some angry evil eyes. Close angry evil eyes. Didn't this just get blown up? Or did they only blow up the moons? I could have sworn this had just gotten blown up. Alright then, end of Act 6, Act 5. Uh. 
Okay, so I'm going to save the game, and the next episode will be Act 6, Intermission 5. So, this has been Anachi Sasuke. This was, I'm not sure what episode of Homestuck this was. All I know is this is going to be the 413th video on my channel at the moment, unless I delete some things. So, if you liked it, a like and a subscribe would be groovy. If you didn't, you'll need to do either one of those things. Uh, as far as the subscriptions go, I'm probably supposed to be like, Oh, click the little bell to join the notification squad. But notification squad sounds stupid, so you don't need to do that either. So, I will see y'all in the next one. Later.